questions. Now we will hear uh, General Jaktar speak about his experience in the army as, as well as the stress that occurs in the military personnel and how it is being dealt with in today's world. So uh, uh, General, uh, over to you and we'd love to hear from you and I'm really excited to listen to what you have to say for, for today. Thank you, Kashish. And uh, first of all, uh, uh, very grateful and very thankful to Ink Feathers Events for inviting me for this event. And uh, it's a pleasure actually to you know speak to young people. It, uh, so that's very heartening. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little uh, different approach to this whole issue of, uh, let's say, mental health or uh, would you would say mental uh, health issues in the army or for a soldier. You must have uh, all uh, seen the movie uh, called uh, Uri. Yes. And, uh, that is uh, the movie in which uh, we have Major Vihan Singh Shergil when he is lining up and is briefing his troops to go in for the surgical strike is the famous dialogue which he asks how's the josh and uh, the reply that he gets is hi sir now soldiering and the army is a high josh community and uh, there is not much scope for low josh because the work that you have to perform the kind of uh, expectations which are you uh, there from from you as uh, when you perform in the field or in uh, peace is uh, you know there to do everything by giving it your best now um, and uh, the indian soldier i would say i can uh, would like to place it on record is one of the i would say the bravest the toughest and the brightest soldiers in the world and this is comes from after having also seen the soldiers from the other parts of the world and other armies and he is rich in combat experience our army has been in the thick of some kind of operations right from the time that we have got independence and uh, we have seen various wars it is continuously involved in counterinsurgency and counter-terrorism of operations in the valley and in the northeast. So this soldier or uh, is rich in ex combat experience and he knows how to handle, you know, the various ups and downs, the stresses or the situations that he faces while performing his duty. His duty is only one. He has to protect his country. It is as simple as that and he will do it and he is trained to do it at the cost of his life even. So that is what the soldier is always knows about. So to these soldiers, even now that I am out of the army, super renovated, I salute them and I salute their courage. I salute their confidence and I salute their competence. Having said this, I will, uh, you know, because I'm addressing a very young audience, it actually makes me feel go back to, you know, my days, young days when I was a young doctor with the, uh, in the army and I served with the paratroopers. I was a paratrooper and I was uh, serving with the special forces and I go back as, back as 1980. Now I served, I'm recollecting and uh, I will try to tell you ki why I am sharing this with you all. I was uh, an RMO as they call it a regimental medical officer with two para. This is two para, that's second battalion of the parachute regiment. And this is the battalion for some of you may know who was, uh, uh, which was dropped or para dropped or air dropped 
in Bangladesh in the 1971 war. And they were dropped at a place called Tangen. And they had to take this Pungli bridge on uh, River Jamuna, which prevented the retreat of this uh, Pakistani army into Dhaka. And uh, this was one of the instrumental, or I would say very monumental event, because it cut off the army, Pakistani army to the west of Dhaka, and they could not enter Dhaka. And uh, so that uh, the siege of Dhaka could not be uh, done, and the Indian army was able to take uh, Dhaka much more easily. So I reached this battalion. This is 1971 that it happened. And I reached and I joined the battalion in 1980. So there were people who had still served in this, you know, operations. They were still there as officers. They were there as uh, JCOs, that is the junior commissioned officers. They were there as soldiers, right, as NCOs. And I, I, I would talk to them and ask them. And my favorite question to them was, and they would always smile back at me and say one answer that was so unanimous. They would always tell me, Bharosa tha. And I would ask them, Kis pe Bharosa tha? So they would say, Apne seniors ke upar, Apne officers ke upar, Apne saathi ke upar, Apni training ke upar, Or Apne upar. This is the thing, this is the belief that this soldier carried when he was in the operations. This is what you call trust. And I feel this was what sustained him. It is not shameful to fear. There is nothing wrong in uh, to be fearful. The soldiers are not honest about it. But they had realized that they had to find a system within themselves, within the area that they were working in or what their job was to be able to do that job and that was trust. Now my second point comes that this trust is not easy to build. It doesn't come overnight. See a soldier is from a same milieu, the same environment as any other civilian that he joins the army. And then he's trained. He undergoes a basic kind of a training. He goes, undergoes advanced training. Then he undergoes specialized training. And this is slowly over a period of time that he is able to build this trust. He's able to build this trust in himself that he'll be able to do the job. He is able to uh, get a trust over his own weapon over his own skills and then he is also able to trust the officers and his you know seniors who are going to lead into battle leadership in the army is not easy it's a very difficult thing because it is uh, the ultimate test of your leadership to lead a man to his death to a harm's way it could be to his life it could be to his limb so this is the kind of stresses which the soldier works what I want to highlight are at this at this point of my you know talk to you is that one trust is very important that that is what is able to you know make you handle the stresses or the mental health issues which come up and the second is the training and the uh, the gradual way uh, it is built up a, a, a soldier is built up to face these problems. So there is nothing suddenly that happens to a soldier. He is trained to do this job and he is competent to do this job. Now, having uh, said all this, uh, the idea, let me tell you at this stage is not to scare anyone, you know, it's not that. There's a, the idea is not scare. Each, I think job has its own, uh, uh, you know, hassles, it has its own peculiarities. It has its own ups and downs. So, uh, so uh, the idea is not to scare anyone. The idea is to just give you a factual kind of a, a picture of what happens in the army and how the army handles, uh, you know, these issues. Very, very, uh, you know, proficiently, I would say, 
uh, that uh, there are not many uh, you know uh, it's not a kind of a problem which is gone out of uh, you know hand for the organization no we are from the same kind of a milieu the same kind of a civil environment so the problem is somewhere whatever is there in the other parts of the country or other parts of the world or other parts of the society now the third point that i which i want to make is that there are yes certain uh definitely specific conditions or specific you know hardships i would say or stresses that a soldier feels or has to face in his life uh, while he is doing his duty see one of the one of the foremost uh, one would understand is the uncertainty there is a, just about uncertainty in everything right and this i am broadly talking about a soldier who is posted in an active field duty or in active operational area uh, you know uh, when the soldier is in a peace station or in a location which is you know uh, where he does not have to face any of these operational uh, issues all right uh, the 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 stresses become a little different they are ordinary like any other human being but i am talking of a soldier who is actually actively doing his duty uncertainty is one part which he has to deal with and he is made to you know trained and given you know uh, situations in which he is able to learn how to deal with this aspect then yes there is it is not a 9 to 5 job right it has it has got long hours he has to do hard work in that uh, there could be lack of sleep there could be at some time even uh, you know lack of you know proper nourishment proper food but then the soldier is again prepared for this he has the trust in the system he has the trust in himself that he will you know see himself through this along with his men then there are of course which you are all people aware indian army is possibly fighting a battle in the highest battlefield in the world in the toughest of the you know desert areas so there is rough terrain there is adverse weather that you know adds uh, you know to his uh, uh, duty uh, or adds to his burden while he is performing these duties a uh, solitude also becomes an issue for a soldier because he is lone many a times when he is countering the situation of the enemy separation from the family not able to handle you know or participate to uh, you know resolve domestic issues is also an issue for the soldier and because he is bound by his uh, you know duty bound by uh, you know his uh, commitment Uh, he feels uh, helpless sometimes in these situations and yes this is uh, could be a uh, uh, you know an area which causes him stress then in the operational uh, you know situations there are bound to be traumatic experiences there are bound to be encounters they are bound to be you know uh, uh you know circumstances or that uh, where he would have to you know fire and see blood and gore that is part of his life he's trained for that and uh, that is what they say even in the training academies i am repeating this training ki jitna ragda utna tagda that means jitna aap you you know train yourself hard more rough and tough that you will become so jitna ragda utna tagda so this is what is the you know motto that the soldier believes in or is made to uh, you know uh, but having said all this i have given a long list it's like a you know a laundry list of you know problems which the soldier uh, can face 
but uh, not to uh, say or i would like to present the other side of it that uh, the organization or the army or the armed forces is constantly willing to you know realize these issues understand these issues and do something very very positive about it there is a great trust on giving the facilities to the soldiers that he gets the right kind of food he gets the right kind of rest he gets the right kind of leave he is able to you know uh, participate uh, well with his family he is given you know time and the operational duties and then there he is posted to a peace station where he he can be with his family so all these aspects are looked at and there is not something which is unrelenting which is happens on a soldier uh, he has to uh, go through it for a particular period of time and yes of course he knows at the end of it or at the back of his mind he knows there is an organization which cares for him that will look after him and that i think gives him a lot of courage and confidence to keep going on and doing his work now uh, this was my you know uh, third point i would say my fourth point is that uh, a soldier after all has certain expectations now why where does he have these expectations he has his expectations while he is at work while he is with his family while he is in the society or he is in the community what are his expectations i would say they are very very simple he just wants that we as citizens of this country recognize what he is doing and respect him for what he is doing that is all there is i don't think he needs he wants any uh, you know material benefits he wants any you know pecuniary uh, you know compensation for all any of these things it is this thing which is very very important for a soldier that he has to have his worth intact and this is where sometimes when there is a mismatch when he is interacting in the family or in uh, or in the work or the family or in the community or society when there is a mismatch and there is an incongruence that you know these stresses or uh, you know these uh, kind of uh mental struggles i would say a soldier uh, does feel uh it is not only that uh, the soldier has to uh develop i i'm i'm actually coming back to what i started with that what does it does it take for a soldier to you know contend with whatever his work is or his job is right and uh Uh, that is i told you it is the trust and for this for this the organization also does something it gives him certain anchors and it steadfastly holds these anchors uh, you know for him so that he can rely on them and these three anchors remember for the soldier are naam namak and nishan i will repeat they are naam namak and nishan and i will try to explain what is naam what do you mean by naam naam is not that he doesn't want fame it's not for that he is working he is working with the two professionalism he is a professional so naam is for him professionalism to the highest degree he has to be good or he has to be highly competent in whatever he is doing namak namak is loyalty that is an anchor for him loyalty to his country loyalty to his you know uh, regiment loyalty to his battalion loyalty to his family loyalty to his sathis his comrades that is loyalty that we are talking of and that's an anchor for him when he is in any kind of adverse situation or stressful situation and the third which i told you is nishan nishan is a symbol that is the colors that the battalions carry in their uh, you know into the battle and they are a symbol of the pride that a soldier has 
for the work that he is supposed to do so that is the nishan the pride of being a soldier or being of part of an organization which has been given a task of the extreme uh, you know sacrifice or would I, and i would add of courage uh, to perform his duty so it sort of brings it back there is something which the soldier has in himself which he builds in himself and there is something which is the organization gives in his anchors to hold on we have our issues there is nothing i there is no point in trying to brush the whole issue under the carpet that we don't have our issues as a army or a soldier has they are bound to have because he is in a very uh, when he is in operational duties there are these operational stressors as we call it i do not know whether jalan sharma would have talked about these uh, you know certain disorders or something what how they are dealt with in, uh, in the uh, army or in the hospitals but yes as a system we have a place uh, you know we have this uh, uh, system in the army where you know a soldier is given uh, a free sort of an access to air his grievances or if he has any problem they are uh, there are there is a built up kind of a graded kind of a chain uh, of his grievance redressal and it's done fast it is not something very bureaucratic it is done fast to help a soldier so that he is able to come out of any stressful situation that he faces himself so uh, uh, there are there are uh, you know uh, preventive uh, aspects or measures which are taken by the organization that's the army there are curative i would say therapeutic uh, you know actions which are taken by the army and there are also rehabilitated you know uh, steps or measures which are taken by the organization to help a soldier to contend with these things uh, and he is able to do so with one thing same thing that yes that trust and the trust in the organization that faith in the organization that it is there with me in all times good bad ugly okay. and one thing uh, uh mr sanjay sharma i was hearing him for part of the you know his presentation he said sports has no nepotism soldiering also has no nepotism <laughs> that is true right okay is, and he said physically uh, fit and mentally fit they couldn't be only sports it is uh, the uh, soldiers also who have to keep up that same uh, you know credo i would say absolutely uh, mentally fit Uh, they have to be physically fit and vice versa that is why having oh, sports and, and that is why having sports and military and the army talking about the army is seems very relatable and very similar to me is because of the uh, i think the dedication and the energy and the enthusiasm that is required for both the fields talk there well, we have a couple of questions already come in so we'll quickly take them before we close yeah, please all right So we have our uh, first question here by uh, Ms. Bokil. Uh, she says that um, it said that suppressing one's emotions is not good for one's mental health, but the circumstance through which army officials might go through might make temporary suppression of emotions necessary. Is there an alternate way to balance out one's emotion without hampering one's mental health? whilst uh, ensuring that they are in the right presence of mind to act properly while in a critical when a critical situation occurs so all in all she's trying to uh, ask if you know as because suppressing mental emotions could be hectic and could be uh, pressurizing on you so in the army sometimes it could be necessary to suppress these emotions how do you handle it and what's the alternative to this see i uh, accept what she is trying to you know say or hint at you know uh, we do face these situations and especially uh, may not be when you are possibly fighting on uh, let's say or a stationed on uh, the borders but definitely when you are facing your own countrymen in a counter insurgency or a counter terrorism you know operation yes these things are 
there and a soldier is taught and he is told that there is nothing wrong in you know these emotions coming to you or you feeling this way but then what is primary he is told what is the job that he has to do he has to keep that in mind and that is very very essential for a soldier to be focused on what is expected from him yes there are will be time we have time we have a system where after we have gone through in the operations there is a debrief there is a way of going over and uh, you know sort of recollecting the whole sequence of events and seeing if we could have done better and that is how we learn our lessons so it is not that the, the the there are no mistakes there will be mistakes there are mistakes there could be in any high voltage high octane kind of a situation there will be but uh soldier is to, uh, taught this that suppressing emotions or to having this uh, you know uh, you know thoughts whatever they may be not something you know odd and he is uh, being dishonest or being disloyal it is very very normal for him to have it but yes the focus is always on the job on the aim what you have got to achieve that is it so that what is what gives comfort to the soldier thank you so much that was a very uh, insightful answer all right so i hope that answered your question oma let's move to the next one this is by professor rajiv kalebar uh he asks uh, the uri film that you were just talking about he just wanted to confirm if this was the first surgical strike that the army had ever conducted and is it a good idea to tell the strategy that followed it all is it a good idea to tell the audience the strategy that followed it and is it the first surgical strike which the indian army has ever conducted professor uh to both your uh, questions i don't think i can answer it you know truthfully uh, in the sense uh, if i is uh, it is like that if what question is generally asked ya yeah, ki tum apni biwi ko roz marte ho you say no to marte ho yes ho oh, ha roz nahi marte ho so it is both ways you know the answer is yes and no i cannot really you know disclose too much on it because i have matlab one in being in the system one is privy to a lot of things but uh, yes as far as the uh, you know strategy is concerned and how it has to be handled you know uh, there is a lot of dramatization which takes place in fiction uh, things are not the way that are you know uh, pictured or uh, put on the screen it doesn't happen that way. it doesn't happen it is not like that. so there is a lot of leeway there is a lot of license which is given to movie makers and i think uh, possibly in the army we just sort of turn a blind eye blind ear blind whatever to it and carry on with our job right it is a dramatization that is uh, used as a representation to the general crowd and we do understand that this happens in almost every genre every sort of autobiography every almost everything that is based on real life because that is how they portray it as it is always based on or inspired by real life so uh, that is how it's presented to the audience thank you so much for answering that one uh, truthfully let's move to the next one uh, mr bhardwaj asks in terms of so, uh, a so in terms of a soldier's perspective how would you define peace of mind okay peace of mind i don't think a soldier needs any you know needs to define his peace of mind they need to is always at peace <laughs> basically you are a very peaceful person right i i i i uh, think he is very content in what he has been you know trained and asked to do for his country because i think that uh that uh, sort of a thought that he is the chosen one or the one who has been you know sort of selected to do this job uh, it gives him a lot of uh, you know uh, peace of mind and uh, uh 
I think that 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 I think every soldier has that pride, as I told you, uh, you know, which I talk of uh, the naam, namak, and nishan. That nishan, that pride in his profession, is something which uh, gives him that peace of mind. Something definitely to take away and remember. Uh, naam, namak, or nishan is something that I will carry uh, throughout my life now because I, that that. line that you said and the the meaning behind it and um the purpose of it i think is very relatable is very apt in irrespective of what field you are in i See, think it is something that we all it is adaptable to your you know daily kind of a civilian life also. yes absolutely so you, you you have to define anchors for yourself in your life whatever you may be doing right but uh, i think it is possibly i uh, would say in a format which is understood by a soldier that these things have been given to him as anchors understood all right thank you so much uh, major general uh, jaktar singh for that wonderful speech there those couple of minutes was not just fruitful and insightful for me but i was really intrigued 